So Jimmy Bryan is a very well-known Telecaster player, perhaps the first, and he was known for playing some very complicated, very fast and technically difficult things. This tune is not one of them. By Jimmy's standards it's fairly simple, and it's one that I really love to use as a way of teaching arpeggios. We can clearly see how he applies some very simple arpeggio shapes and follows the chord changes. And it's a really good technical exercise for your picking hand and your fretting hand, and getting the two things synchronised nicely. OK, let's jump straight into it. So for the chord progression in the A sections, we're in the key of G, and we're mostly dealing with a 1-5 kind of movement. So we're thinking G, D7, back and forth. Now you could simply play... We're going to add a little bit of that walking bass that you can hear the double bass player doing, and we'll use our three note swing voicings to do it. We'll go G6, then D7 with the A in the bass, and then G major triad with the B in the bass, back to the D7 with the A in the bass. G7 at the end of the second A section. Now we're heading to the B section where we go to our four chord, the C, and again we're doing a 1-5 kind of movement. We're thinking C, G7. We'll use all the same shapes we did down here. So C6, G7 with the fifth in the bass, C major triad with the third in the bass and back. this really cool rundown. We go to the 4 minor, so that's C minor, and then we go to B flat, then A flat, then G7. Kind of a hit the road jack kind of movement. And I think again we'll go with our three note voicings there, but let's spice things up by adding some sixths to those chords. So C minor 6, B flat major 6, A flat major 6, G7 will keep the same as before. And then we're going to go to E flat 7, where we're using this open C7 type of shape, and then D7, which is the actual 5 of our original key of G, it takes us back to the A section. So that rundown from the C minor sounds like this. Now we're back to the A section. And that would complete one chorus. Okay, now I'm going to do one complete play through the entire form. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Okay, now let's get on to his lead part. So he's playing over the G chord to begin with, where he simply descends this G major arpeggio within what we can think of as a C shape, if we're thinking of the caged system. From the root, down the octave to the root again. So you've got the root, the fifth, the third, the root. Okay, so let's do our homework here and really figure out this full shape in this entire range. So we're thinking G major, one, three, five. So that's G, B, D. If we grab everything we can within this 7th to 10th fret range, we can go B, D, G, B, D, G, B, D. Or 3, 5, 1, 3, 5, 1, 3, 5. Really practice those, get it under the fingers, get the picking nice and even. As always, you can get the lesson materials for this at the link in the description. This is going to be a real bumper pack because not only are you going to get everything you need for Chatterbox, 
the chords, the melody, and I've even included the bass line tabbed out. Uh, but you'll also get all of your cage-shaped arpeggios for your majors, your minors, and your sevenths, all of what I would consider essential knowledge. There are two ways you can get these materials. You can join the Patreon, where for a small monthly fee you get access to all of the lesson materials for my videos, or you can make just a one-off purchase through the Gumroad link. Either way, I massively appreciate your support. Thank you so much. Okay, so the exact phrase he plays starts with this triplet kind of rhythm. One, two, three, and four, and a one. Nice little pickup rhythm there. Okay, so for the next phrase, we're thinking D7. He plays this. Now, first of all, we want to be thinking D7. What can we extend that with? We could add a nine if we wanted to make it a D9, right? Or a 13. He's thinking D9. And there's a lot of ways we can think about this shape here. We can think of it as a D9 arpeggio that takes you from the nine down to the third. Some people call these three to nine arpeggios. Three, five, flat, seven, nine. We could also think of it as an F sharp minor seven flat five arpeggio. Because if we think about it, F sharp minor seven flat five would be the top four notes of your D9 chord. Again, this is the importance of knowing your basic diatonic harmonized major scale in arpeggio form. Because these basic arpeggios, your basic sevenths, uh, are going to be multi-purpose. So the seventh arpeggio in the key of G, you know, F sharp minor seven flat five, you'll be using that to gain access to some of the upper extensions of a D dominant seventh chord. In this case, bringing the nine in. Okay, so back to the melody. We have our G major, D nine. Then we're going to climb back up that G major arpeggio. And then we're thinking D seven this time. Third root flat seven fifth. This would be part of your G shape. For a D7 arpeggio. If we're thinking D major, there's the G shape. We're gonna arpeggiate that and add a flat seven in. So now you've got this, you've got the G major to D7 with the nine on top. Climb the G major, descend D7 from the third. And we're swinging all the eighth notes. And then we repeat the first few shapes again. But we finish up on that ascending G major, and then we go around again. This time we're adding that flat seven on the G because the chord is a G seven at that point in the progression. That's just before we're heading up to the C chord. So you just take the G major arpeggio that we had earlier and you add the flat seven whenever possible. One, three, five, flat seven. There it is again in the lower octave. And there's the chord, G seven. So again, that would be the C shaped G seven arpeggio. Okay, now we're on to the B section. So we're playing over a C chord. First things first, let's look at our full arpeggio within this range. You've got root, three, five, root, three, five, root. We're just gonna take this middle portion here, this major triad, and we're gonna also extend it by adding a sixth to match the sound of the chord, C6. And then we have the G7. We're gonna use part of that C shape, G7 arpeggio again. And then we're back to our C major, where we're going up to this top note here. And then on the G7 this time, we're going to recycle this idea we had on that initial D7, where we had the 9, flat 7, 5, and 3. We mentioned the 3 to 9 arpeggio. Imagine you were moving that to G, but then moving it to the next string set. You'd have this shape here. So again, we can think of this as a G7, three to nine arpeggio, three, five, flat, seven, nine. Or you can think of it as a B minor seven, flat five arpeggio. 
either way, get the shape under the fingers and know it as both names really. So now this is what we've got so far in our B section. We then go back to the C again, C6, G7, C major, climb up to the root. So all together that sounds like this. And then we're on to the C minor where we basically just descend the arpeggio. And again, let's look at the full shape there. One, flat three, five, one, flat three, five, one, flat three. And then we're following the chord progression. B flat major, ascending. A flat major, descending. G major, ascending. Over the E flat seven, we simply grab the root, go up a whole tone, connect it to the root of the D seven. And then we're back to another A section. Technique-wise, let's talk about the picking for a moment. I would recommend alternate picking throughout, even when crossing through strings ascending and descending. For this piece, to make things really pop and swing nicely, let your picking stroke be determined by the rhythmic placement of the note. You know, anything on the beat, use a down. Anything off the beat, use an up. One and two and, for example, down, up, down, up. So if I play the A section with that in mind, you're gonna have down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. Just a nice run of consistent alternate picking. As far as the left hand goes, use pieces like this as a good excuse to keep refining your technique and make things more efficient and smoother sounding. Try and avoid having things sound too staccato. Make it sound really smooth. But also try and avoid having too many notes overlapping. Try and keep it so tidy. Especially with a clean tone, you don't really get away with anything when it comes to that stuff. Also make sure that you're delivering the notes with a good strong voice. Use a bit of force in the picking. You don't want any of your notes to just sort of disappear and whimper away. So to close this lesson out, I'm just going to go through the basic arpeggio shapes in the cage system. Um, again, the sheets are going to have all of these written out with the finger numbers and everything. Okay, so here's a quick whistle stop tour of that stuff. Let's take a C major arpeggio to begin with and run it through the five caged shapes. So C major will start with the C shape in open position. Now I'd recommend running these from the root up and then descend, come back and pick up anything that you had below the root and return to the root. Now the A shape would be next. We're thinking of spelling out the word caged with our shapes, C-A-G-E-D. So the A shape for the C major arpeggio would be this. After the A shape, we have the G shape. Then we have the E shape. And then we have the D shape. And then again, we have the C shape, but this time without open strings involved. So we can really see how it falls under the fingers as a movable shape. So get all of those shapes really comfortable under the fingers um, and move them through all 12 keys and then do the minor equivalents. So just flatten the third and then maybe add the seven each time. So start off with your major seven, one, three, five, seven and then do your dominant seven, one, three, five, flat seven, and then minor seven, one, flat three, five, flat seven, uh, and then minor seven, flat five, one, flat three, flat five, flat seven, and then diminish seven, one, flat three, flat five, double flat seven, 
And then you've got what I would consider all of your essential arpeggios down. And again, these things are going to be multi-purpose, so they'll really pay off. I do recommend working on that. Okay, remember again that all of this is typed up and available at the link in the description. So do get hold of that bumper pack. There'll be many pages to work your way through. Uh, do take your time, chip away at it. It doesn't have to be done fast, this stuff. It's a gradual process and you want to just slowly absorb these things. Okay, thanks so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed working on this Jimmy Bryant piece and your arpeggios. See you next time, guys.